Hello, everybody. Friday Night Pikes. When here with here with uh, Kyle Soley, Trent Offsadale, Offsadale Hover Dead Doors, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so um, it's Friday night, and um, Kyle's here. And we're gonna talk about. <laughs> we're gonna talk Good about time. some well, teasers here. Fish hunting. Fish hunting. Yeah, fish right. hunting. Um, have any of you guys been out yet? No, I've been building teaser boxes. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Trent? Just garage doors. You're the only one on the ice. I am? Yeah. Well, I've only been out for about three hours total. And it's what, I was just talking to a friend of mine today, and I said 18 days in, and I've only been out three hours. Well, that's, that's all right. But, though. you know, it's the it was the wind at first, and then... The lakes weren't freezing over. Then we had a bunch of geese in here keeping the water over. <laughs> <laughs> you can shoot those. Had, That's fine. Yeah. And then um, and then it was windy. So you couldn't stick a house out for a few days. And then it finally did freeze over. And then we had clear ice. And I think the fish saw us. But we get some bank and snow tomorrow. Yeah. We'll be in business. How much ice or uh, snow do you think we'll get? Just enough to bank the houses. <laughs> That's all we need. I heard four inches. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so, um, Kyle Soli, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, you have a family, where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Fertile. What you do? I have, well, I do construction work around town residential, a little bit of commercial. And then I build teaser boxes in all my free time this time of year. And then I try to kill some coyotes and stab some fish. And then do some of the things my wife asked me to do on occasion, <laughs> just to keep it happy around the house. <laughs> and other than that, pretty basic. Yeah. And we're here to talk about these little boxes. Get yourself a solely spinner. Um, pretty basic, same as everybody else's. Only thing is, mine float. And I like that because I got little boys. <laughs> And I swear to God, if it can end up in a hole, it will end up in a hole. So I, I had a the first <laughs> the first minute that I was out this year, I had a, a metal teaser out there, and the back door plopped off because I forgot to unhook the battery. Plopped off in the hole. It, the first minute I was out in the fish house, and so I had to go grab my magnet, go grab that, and pull it out. So yeah, yours uh, yours floats. So uh, we usually start this out. Um, talking, we usually ask the guests what your favorite spearing memory was. Um, what you know, my favorite one after years of doing it came last year. Uh, my little boy lives for this sport. I mean, yeah. if I leave the house and he finds out I went spearing and he didn't get to come with, I am right there above dirt just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, last year on his birthday, December 19th, we went out, not a lot of snow. You know, so we didn't much for banking, windy, awful. And we couldn't get the house. I had the house tied to the ranger. I had it spiked down, just trying to keep it from caving in. And I couldn't get the heater working after fighting to get a house up. So I'm like, all right, we got to go grab a new heater. <clears throat> but, of course, as soon as we untied the ranger, the whole thing collapsed and made a big mess fell in the hole. So he wants to give up. I said, nope. We're gonna, gonna spear fish on your birthday because that's what you wanted to do. So after fighting with it, get a new heater, get the house all set back up. He spears about a six pounder. It was a good day already. That was all we were there for. Well then a little bit later, we're sitting there and I see a big shovel head come in. And I asked him, I said, You ready for this one? And he got nervous because it was that big and he's little. He's eight. And he said, I'm going to help. So I threw the spear and he put his hand on it, you know, like a little kid does to learn. And that was my first 40 incher. Wow. After years. I just of saw trying. the picture of that. I don't know if you had posted a memory on Facebook yep. or what, yep. but. So that one there takes that had the a big head on it. Yep. It was a nice fat one. And it, like you and said, it, after years of trying. It wasn't yeah, a big it, lake either. You don't have to say nope, a lake, but it wasn't a small a big, one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just a local lake around home. Not a destination trip to devils or lake of the woods or anything like Isn't that, that special, so was, though, to do that on his birthday yep on his birthday and the 
fact that he lives for it. You know, my older two boys kind of hit or miss. They'll go with if I ask them to. They don't look for it. But yes. that one I'd say was my favorite. Um, so we have Trent with us today, and he's kind of filling in for Jordan. So I thank you, Trent, for, for doing that. No um, so I don't know if I've asked you this question. What's your favorite spirit memory? Um, well, I like a lot of the trips with my boys to the lake. It's a lot of fun. But, uh, probably when I first got into spear and heading with Jordan, took me up north fishing and we both got some really nice fish and that kind of sparked it all off for me for the sport and I've been hooked ever since. Um, not a lot of angling going on on my side of the house at home I guess everybody pretty one-sided on the way I fish in the winter I guess um, yeah we got some nice fish and pretty uh, iconic place up there where we went fishing and uh, really got me into it I never really speared a lot before that and uh, we're, I guess I'm sticking with it now yeah <laughs> pretty into it so um how did you get into spearing? You know, when I was a kid, we lived up in uh, Roseau, or Salo, in between Roseau and World, and my dad was into it. <clears throat> Started back years ago on Union Lake, actually, right here, when he was younger, and then we moved up there, and when I got old enough, that's where we lived, so we did the Lake of the Woods, World River. Actually amazed I stuck with it as a kid up there because everybody knows what Lake of the Woods looks like. And you get bored looking in a dirty hole. Yeah. But that's what started it. And then when we moved back here, then I thought this was amazing because even pour water around here is better than what you get out of Lake of the Woods most of the time. <clears throat> Can you hear? Huh? You listen up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So just talk a little closer. Oh, am I on too far? People are just saying that we're... <laughs> All right. Here. At least your mic is on. There you go. Now we're picking you up. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't on. No. <laughs> Amateur. All right. First time, guys. <sighs> Give him a break. Um, so what do you look for when you're setting up a... For a, setting up a house? Like, are you looking for structure? Or are you... You know, you, <clears throat> I'm a point guy. Yeah. I like anything 8 to 10 feet right off of a point. I don't know if it makes a big difference, but my whole life, that's just always what I kind of looked for. And then if I can't find that, you know, like one of these little round lakes around here, I like edge of a weed bed. Uh, if you can find a drop-off, I know a lot of them don't have it. They're pretty shallow and slope slow, but work the edge of the weeds three, four feet out kind of. Um that's about it. If it, you know, I some guys like to be out in the trees and stuff at Devil's Lake. I don't like cutting holes twice, so I kind of try to stay away from them when I'm out there because you never know what's in the bottom of it. But mm -hmm. mostly, it points in the weed bed. That's what I'm mostly after. <clears throat> um. So with your teasers here, we'll get back to them. Um, what made you want to start making them? Uh, being on the waiting list for too long for somebody else. <clears throat> yeah. And that was, it was like, I waited like eight months and never had one. Spearing was coming. It's like, if they can build them, I can build them. And I made the first one and I didn't really want to get into it. I just wanted a teaser for me, you know. Well then, I made it out of plastic so it wouldn't rust. I know it's not as durable as metal, but. If you're careful with it, it shouldn't be a problem. And I found these boxes that were sealed. Well, that got me thinking, what if I could make this float? Because, like you said, you're always heading back for a magnet. Never seem to have it when you drop something, you know. So I thought, well, if I can get it to float. So the first one I made did not float. It was about three inches shorter than this one. So with the battery and everything in there real tight, there just wasn't enough air that it would stay up. So I bought a bigger box and made another one. And this one will float, not forever, because it does have holes drilled in it, you know. So you got, you, you probably got, got fifteen. Seconds. You got fifteen minutes though. Oh, you do to get. Oh yeah, it'll float for quite a while before it pushes enough air in. 
So if you can't get it out of there in 15 minutes, you probably need to be fishing it out of the bottom of the lake yourself, I guess. And uh, it'll float uh, maybe like a five-inch daredevil. You know, it'll stay up and float the daredevil. Sure. Uh, you get bigger than that. You know, some of those big ovals like to use. That'll pull it down, but only till the spoon hits the bottom. And you can always fish you can it, hook with, it with your spear. treble hook or spear. Yeah, I, I use my spear when it happens and then just grab it with a tine and it sure. comes right up. So that was kind of what got it going. Well, then when I was using it, people stopped by and visit, you know, social hour at the lake. And they started asking, so I made a few, and I made a few more, and then it was just kind of snowballed from there, I guess. Um, so what kind of battery does it use? Runs 6 volt, just like most of the other ones, okay. just for easier that way. You're not yeah. messing with 3, 4, D, you know, Ds or something like yeah. that. And it's easy to put the alligator clips on that way and saves weight, so... <clears throat> And it, I've never went through, I spear maybe not as much as a lot of guys, but a lot more than most. And I've never had to put more than one battery in it in a year. Yeah. And it's fairly quiet. Um, I just said Trent over tonight, we were doing a little research and development because motors are kind of hard to come by. So I had a different brand I could find. But when I bought them, I was disappointed because they, they hum a little hard, harder, you know. <clears throat> so I was making Trent listen. Tell me if he thought that was acceptable volume or not, because it might end up being that way. Because shipping is just screwed up, and everything takes forever. You know, we what I got for motors last year in two weeks take eight weeks to show up now most of the time. So I was trying to find a better source, kind of. Um, any questions, Trent? <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um. Do you have, like, a big stockpile of them, or is it kind uh, of a... At the beginning of the year, I try to start out with a stockpile, but that first, it's never enough. A guy should have 30 of them <laughs> laying there because it, it's all right. I had, like, eight of them this year because I spent all summer working on my new shop, and I got a few done, and they're gone. And now people are just, I'm probably going to finish up another 10 of them here in the next weekend half of those are gone you know it's the rush before christmas and yeah. people are excited to hit the water and looking for new stuff you know yeah. so i don't know if everyone is familiar with a teaser i know up here teasers have been around for a long time i mean i think this is probably one of the original sites of where teasers started um way back in the day jimmy johnson the guy up here um kind of started i think yeah. the most the um production type of teaser i think a lot of guys use clocks or um ways to spin something but um so the way this teasers work is there's a motor in there runs off a battery and it spins normally a daredevil some people put decoys on them but um spins a daredevil down there uh the northerns up here anyway seem to really um, come after a daredevil um that's spinning i know that's what i grew up using i barely ever used a decoy <clears throat> so uh, I know a lot of places I've brought that to, and they're just they don't know what I'm what they're what they're for. I remember I brought one down to a spearing tournament down in Brainerd and uh, put it in the raffle. The guy that won it's like, "What is this?" And I said, "Well, <laughs> it's pretty cool actually." And and he was just when I told him what it was for, he was happy as a he he, he could be just because uh, he wanted to try it out so bad. So. Huh. Um, so, yeah, uh, I know there's getting to be a lot of teasers on the market now, but um, <clears throat> I think one of the nice things about yours is they do float. Um, and I haven't been able to use one. I, this is this is mine, by the way. <laughs> we traded. Yeah, I got a really nice crappie decoy. Yeah. If you don't own one of Ryan's decoys, get yourself one. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to try it out, and we'll get it out hopefully in the next week or two. Um, up here we have ice. We've had ice for probably almost two weeks, but uh, spearing ice, or at least enough to go out on, it's been, I'd say, probably a week, maybe. Yeah. Um, when it's, once we got that one below zero night, that seemed to add about two inches of ice for enough people to get out. So I think right now we're looking at like around five inches, maybe a little more, maybe a little less in some places. Yeah, I stopped and talked to my buddy today on... Uh... <clears throat> public access at maple on the east end he was sitting on six yeah and uh, that's usually the 
the lake that gets the most ice right away, or yep. at least the bay does. Yep. And it's always dirty, and for some reason this year it's not. It's looking pretty good this year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know down by Brainerd, I was talking to my friend Joe Fulton down there, and he said they don't have ice yet. And he's he's uh, waiting for it. Uh, I don't know how far down south you have to go. I think in Alex they have it. My sister in Fergus just piped on and said they just put their house out. So um, I don't know where the line is. It was weird this year, the lake we live on, it, it was one of the last to freeze over, and usually it's one of the first to freeze over. So, um, What's your favorite colors you use down the hole? Well, you got to go with red and white. Yeah. Been around since the first Daredevils, and I do like a perch color yeah. or a fire tiger or whatever <laughs> you guys want to call it, but that's what I got my 40-incher off of, so probably have to throw that back down the hole again the first time out, but... Um, Gold seems to work pretty good, too, uh, especially if the water's a little dirtier. I don't know if it gets a little shine that way or something. Um, and then any configuration, you know, <coughs> you get bored and ice, I'll start sticking stuff together, maybe a couple different colors stacked yeah. on top of each other. I got some with golf balls on them, you know. Um, God the balls. guy I used to spear with. <laughs> uh, guy he used to spear on the same lake with uh, Danny Doy just passed away he uh, taught me that if you're really bored and you're killing time he doesn't say that it'll help you spear any fish but you can cut up a pop can and hang it from the top and fold it out like an octopus <laughs> and it might not get you any more fish but he said at least it gives you something to do <laughs> so that was kind of and then you make a new one every time you go out you never save it <laughs> My dad did that with a Diet Coke can. He'd get so bored, he'd finally no. just stick it. He wouldn't do nothing with it either. He'd just clip it, fill it full of water, drop down, and just sit down there and spin. I don't no. remember ever seeing anything off of the Diet Coke. But. No. And I, I've tried it a few times, and I can't say I've ever speared a fish off of it, but it will kill 15, 20 minutes of your time. If it's really slow. <laughs> yeah, Danny Doy, I just uh, uh, want to say that, uh, you know, we're going to miss him. He was a... He was a character up here in northern Minnesota, good storyteller. He told me one of the best spearing stories, and I can't repeat it because I wouldn't tell it as good, and it probably wasn't one that could be repeated. But um, <laughs> uh, I remember one birthday I went out, and he was in an establishment up here, and we were we were heading back home, and we stopped in Erskine here, and he was there, and um, he told me that story. I asked him, will you tell that that story with the it was a, about an otter and uh oh my gosh everyone in there was laughing and <laughs> and just focused on him and we're, we're just gonna miss him so much but um i've heard the otter story too yeah <laughs> i think if you know danny you've heard the otter story <laughs> It's worth telling. Them. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Someone should someone should have wrote a book of all his stories oh. because they were there, and you could hear them ten times and you'd never get bored. So it was really that's a good offshoot though. Yeah. What's the worst thing you ever had come up out of your hole? Um, I know my brother in law had an otter up at Cabotogama. It okay. went right in. I heard him scream. He screamed like a little girl. <laughs> Jason Allridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were we were like probably. 40, 50 yards apart, and all of a sudden I hear this, Wah! and he's running out of his house. He thought, he didn't know what it was, and it came right up. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I I had a muskrat. Uh, God, that was years ago, right out of college, spearing on a little lake north of Faustin, a lot of deadfall and stuff in it. And the day before, I had saw one swim through the corner. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. Never saw that. Get up the next morning, going back for more northerns. And I opened up my door, and overnight that thing had put six inches of crap on the ice mm -hmm. on the floor of my ice house. So I'm mad. I scoop it out, throw it back. Got a mess. Yeah, well, he wasn't done working because about a half hour later, come right up between my legs, tipped over backwards in the chair because you're not ready for that. The northerns <laughs> don't jump out. And uh, there I'm laying there, and he's on my leg. And then I'm starting to think him he's going to bite me, you know. Luckily, I have my car hearts on, so it didn't maybe matter. And I tried kicking him in the hole, and I couldn't get a connection on him. So finally, I just bailed out the side door. Then he came out on the ice with me. <laughs> Was he jumped, rabid? I don't know. Jumped out on the ice. Then he took off running for the woods. 
So I'm hoping he found his hole to get back in because I shut the door and closed off mine. I wasn't having that. I don't know <laughs> if he made it or not, but that was that was by far the most interesting day on ice I've ever had. That's uh, I've had him on the exciting. ice before too. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know. Like uh, we have one out here. I'm pretty sure because I've seen him all summer, but I don't see any holes. You know, it, it freezes over, and unless you have a dark house out, you don't see them. Yeah. You know? How about you, Trent? You seen any weird stuff in your hole? Yeah, I've had muskrats in my hole, and I don't know. It's more so on the on the ice that I had an interesting story up north. That, you had um, a Jordan Gunnison on your on your hole. Yeah, yeah. He'd come swimming by. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna spike him, but no. Uh, so we, uh, I think me and Jordan, well, Jordan's hard to get out of bed up north. So yeah. we were late on the ice. So uh, how'd that go? So Mark had got a fish earlier. I think it was Mark had got a fish early in the, in the morning since we were late because of Jordan sleeping in anyway. Um, and uh, <laughs> so we get out there and Justin and Mark have been fishing for a while. Well, Mark's fish had disappeared appeared by that time by the time we got out there anyway and uh so me and jordan are getting in our houses and stuff and suddenly i see well there's a fish by my house right so i'm looking around and wondering what the heck's going on i thought obviously some shenanigans was going on but here uh it was either not a fisher but a weasel or a little bit bigger had took it from mark's house drug it past justin's house <laughs> past jordan's house and i had left my i have a big sleigh that i put all my fishing gear in and it drug it underneath the house and just the tail was sticking out well, try to explain that to the game order yeah <laughs> it's not my fish <laughs> right <laughs> i think that would go but uh ended up it was still under there and it goes ended up taking off and running circles and he must have been hungry because it kept circling around it never really left until we messed with it too much and then it finally took off but yeah it's pretty fun interesting yeah there's a lot of that up north there's a lot of what wild animals that are yeah. a little more daring than the yeah the, uh, lakes a little quieter yeah Not lakes quieter cabin every 15 feet right timber wolves i've seen them up north yeah me too yeah a lot of fun mm. but. um so, uh, if somebody wants to get one of your teasers, what do, what do they have to uh, do? Do you have a Facebook page? I do have a Facebook page, Solely Spinners, on there. Uh, they can just message me on there. That seems to be how most of the people who don't personally know me get a hold of me. It's the easiest way. Um, had a couple guys ask if I got a website. I pound nails for a living, so no, I do not have a website, and I probably never will. Yeah. <laughs> So Facebook's probably the easiest way, or if you know somebody who knows me, give me a call on my phone or a text. Call Jordan. He don't have enough to do. If you know Jordan Gunnison, <laughs> he's got my number. He's always looking for a deal. <laughs> um, to go back to the craziest thing they'd seen, well, it's not in the hole, but Ryan Ebert um, and his crew he spears up with up in the, the up of Michigan. They're from Wisconsin. They had a hibernating bear on the ice, and they all took pictures next to it. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, Trent, what color do you use down the hole? I'm kind of into the what the old school white, red, white, mm -hmm. Glenn Thompson yeah. for for my um, teaser. Yeah, for my teaser and. Uh, yeah, still kind of the fire tiger colors or light oranges and yellows. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I think it's more more of catching the attention of the fish coming by than mm -hmm. you know. That's why I want to get my colors brighter to you know attract them. I guess sure. So these two, um, I was talking to them last year about this, but uh, they do a little bit of coyote hunting, and uh, they do it at night right yeah for the most part um if somebody was going to get into coyote hunting what 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 do you suggest you know depends on how into it you want to get mm -hmm. um cheapest way is get yourself a mouth call and grab your deer rifle and head out on the full moon on the snow um 
if you got some real fun money saved up and you want something really cool, I'm a big advocate for the thermal scope because you can hunt where you can't see your hand in front of your face and still shoot a coyote at 200 yards, and they are a lot less weary in the pitch black. I mean, it's, it takes a lot of the edge off of it. You know, you're not fighting with the the smell and the sight, and you better not twitch kind of thing. Um, I guess I started out like most guys, just with a deer rifle and a cheap call and hunting moonlit nights, hunting during the day, you know, first set in the morning, last set in the evening. You ever hunted with a shotgun? I have. Uh, for years, Minnesota was a real stickler. So from January 1st till March, middle of March, they let us use lights on a shotgun, but not on a rifle. So we fought with that. Um, it's not all bad. You know, you're in the dark. Uh, they're a little less weary, so you can get them in the shotgun range. It helps now with the newer loads they make. You know, dead coyote stuff will reach out to 70 yards of the 12-gauge with a full choke in it. So it helps a little bit, but it ain't like a rifle, you know. Hmm. And Trent, you're just kind of getting into it too, right? Yeah. Yeah, Kyle got me into it. And Trent's catching actually, the sickness. Yeah, catching <laughs> the sickness. Got a hand-me-down scroll from Kyle and... Yeah, yeah, I was originally hunting with them just the moonlight nights, and it's kind of it, it's it's fun, but you got to not the same as the yeah, yeah in the dark when you can go and see everything mm-hmm. is really, really. I don't uh, care to work night shifts as much, so. But you guys are out at like what two four in the morning? Ah, uh, if the hunting's good. Trent won't go to bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first night we went out with the thermals, what was it, like 20 below? Because yeah. you just got yours. He gave me his hand-me-down, and we were going that night, but it was cold. It was bad. It was it was that kind of night where you, you blink and your eyes stick shut. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was that awful. But coyotes got to eat, right? <laughs> Especially when it's cold. Yeah, so you got to try it. I don't remember if we shot anything that night. I think we uh, probably got home a little earlier than normal because you just had to go home and feel your fingers again, you know. But right. it's uh, it kills the downtime in between spearing because it's hard to spear in the yeah. dark, you know. <clears throat> um, anyone have any questions for Kyle here? If you do, let us know. Type your questions in the comments there. Um. So when do you guys think you will be getting out on the ice anytime soon? Or uh, I'd like to go Sunday. That's yeah. my goal, I'll see how the weather turns out. But my plan is to try to sneak out on Sunday. Tomorrow might be a good day before the storm. Or we got to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try for tomorrow or the latest Sunday, hopefully. Yeah. Where should I go, Ryan? I would <laughs> go... To Cameron Lake. Um, I heard the Northern's in there pretty big this year. The Lewis Bridge? Yeah, the Lewis Bridge. Texas Crossing. The water Texas Crossing. crossing. I yeah. That'd be good. yeah. I think the ice is very It's going to be a little thinner, but <laughs> you're going to make it. <laughs> yeah. I see uh, Colton from Bell River Spears is already on the river. It looked Have like. you speared rivers? Never. Me neither. I want to, just to say you, I did it. You spear Sand Hill? Seen? Have you ever speared the Sand mm-hmm. Hill? No, I haven't tried the Sand Hill. I tried, I tried uh, the Red Lake River and Thief River one time. It's kind of hard to keep your teaser in the hole. Mm-hmm. Kind of wants to go out there a little bit. Next time I do it, I'd cut my hole with the flow, put my teaser on the upstream side, and maybe you can spear on the. Sure. Right? But other than that, there's Northerns in there. Uh, it's a little dirty. I think I talked to Colton about that one time, and he says he hangs his teaser yeah, back behind string him. behind him and sits. Oh, okay. And it sits out, out front, and fish only come one way. So, I don't know. Colton's never invited us fishing down no. there, has he? Well, it looked like he was spearing carp the one the time I saw him. But I didn't, does, he's he even, from, does he even spear, or does he just build spears? <laughs> Usually that's the way it works. <laughs> People that make the equipment don't do it. They don't but, do as much. I noticed that. <laughs> um, so, there. Are, I got a question here. Uh, what thermal scope are you using from Mark Elton? Uh, I run a 2-8, to eight, 384 ATN right now. Um, I just ordered up a new Super Hogster to try that out. Yeah. Um, that's one of them things, too. Uh, 
the more money you can spend, the happier it'll be with it. Um, for around our area, a two to eight works fine. The, they're digital zoom, so the more you zoom in, the more the picture degrades, kind of like yeah. zooming in on your phone or your camera. Yeah. So it kind of depends on where you're hunting. You know, if you're out west and you got some long shots in the open country, I'd go to like the 640 resolution and a little higher base magnification so you don't have to zoom in as quick. And that way you'll have a clearer picture farther out. Sure. But around here, most of my shots in the dark are 100 yards, 150 is getting out there. Um, we did have a question here. Um, what caliber are you using? Uh, I run a 223, and then when my new Super Hogster shows up, I'll probably put that on a 22250. How about you, Trent? Yeah, same calibers, yep. Not the Creedmoor or anything like that? No. We like to keep a pelt here in there. <laughs> <laughs> 22, then. Well, that might work, too. <clears throat> uh, question for you, Kyle. Uh, how much to get a Soli spinner if you want to release uh, that information? As of right now, they're 80 bucks. As long as all the suppliers are nice to me and don't jack up the price, all the material, I plan on keeping them about there, um, at That's least through this winter. And then I'll have to see what things cost when the next year rolls around to adjust it. But 80 bucks will get you on this winter. Cool. So, Trent, do you think you can do this on a regular basis or what? Yeah, nothing to it. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to turn the mic on, right? <laughs> shoot <laughs> yeah uh jordan he's he's kind of fuming it looks like he's mad that he's not here yeah i make this show look good i think yeah so kyle brought with him a hat um and i think it'd be a good time to maybe uh do some kind of giveaway for the people that are listening so i'm gonna have kyle think of a number one through 500 one through Let's do one through 500. There'll probably be less um, same numbers. But whoever gets the number first gets um, gets the – so it's two people have the same number. Obviously, the person who does it first will get it. <laughs> gets the hat yeah. and Ryan's teaser. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Ryan's been waiting for so, that. Uh, so the people that are listening right now, you're going to have the chance of winning that hat – uh, we'll get it out to you. Uh, one through five hundred. Start listing some numbers, and by the end of this, oh, we we'll, even finished, and we got Wayne jumping in there. We got Wayne at two fifty. <clears throat> Anything else you guys want to talk about today? We didn't talk. What's Ryan's favorite color? Well, uh, for a teaser, um, I uh, I like red and white, but my you can't see it, and I'd have. Well, Trent could grab it, I suppose. Um, that's my dad's up there. I retired it. Oh, but I, I made one there? I made one just like it. Uh, it's an orange and gold, um, hammered. Okay. And uh, I don't know if you can see that. But um, had a lot of luck. It's kind of like a copper gold, um, and then it's a brass on top, and then a little one on the bottom. I've got I have a lot of fish off of that. So orange and gold or orange and copper and... Red and white with my decoys, obviously red and white's always in the bag. And um, I really like a blue and kind of a copper. I've been starting to paint some white fish, kind of that color, and um, have a lot of luck with that. So if that was the two, only two that I could bring. Green, they say, is a good color to bring with you so that, you know, if you have a fire tiger, it's probably covering it. But um, I, heard, I saw a guy message on some Facebook thing about, <clears throat> how the fish are always, you know, most of the time northerns are looking up. Looking up. And he wondered why um, people never use dark colors on the bottom. Because um, a lot of people paint their decoys white on the bottom or whatever. But he, he said, you know, it would make sense to have a dark color on the bottom because they're Stand looking out up against the, the yeah, ice that's and good stuff. Point. So I don't know. Might have to try that. I would think red is dark enough, but maybe not. So. You've used a lot of decoys since you carve. I don't use that many. I've always been a spinner guy. Yep. My question for you is, do you like your decoys to be more contrast like that? Like, you know, like red and white? Or do you like to go with a realistic one? Um, 
The realistic part of it, it maybe isn't as important. I think it's the color combination. Uh, I would say in clear water, I would probably go more realistic. If I was in cloudy water, obviously, I would. Something that stands out more. Yeah, yeah. But um, I uh, throw everything down the hole. I'm the same way with you. I grew up using teasers. Uh, We had a Dewey decoy, and we'd throw that in every once in a while. Um, Seemed to have the most luck on a teaser, and now, since I started making them, I start using them more. Um, and it's funny, some days a teaser is what they want. They want to come into that daredevil. And then there's some days where they're coming into that decoy nonstop. And um, I think it's just you got to try it out, try different combinations. Try a teaser and a decoy, or maybe two decoys, or maybe just a teaser. Um, it seems like it's always different. And different lakes are different. So basically, you just got to carry a big bag. Yeah. Everything that fits. Yeah. Keeps you busy. Yeah. Keeps you busy. There you go. I can't imagine just using like one or two decoys the whole time. I just, I would get so bored doing that. I don't know. <laughs> it's probably fine, but. I'm, uh, my dad was always a live sucker guy, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm into that. I know they don't let us do that, but. Oh, question. Oh. Is it adjustable or is it one speed? It is adjustable. Yeah. It's it is. Uh, zero to. 85 100. rpms yeah close to 100 yeah. so zero to 85 rpm i don't know i run at about half speed when i'm running mine mm-hmm. uh, i don't know if it matters if you crank it up a little more higher you turn it up the more motor noise there is i like it dead quiet in my spear house if i can help it mm-hmm. at half i don't know if it's my carpenter ears that aren't that good but i can't hear it when mm-hmm. i'm sitting there at half speed so that's why i kind of run it there i don't know Maybe I'll slow it down to just barely turning. You use like a tip up line on it, or what do you? Yeah, I use a, like it. I feed the tip up line through, pegs out the bottom. I run it all the way through, tie it back to itself, and then I make it so it can be about eight feet long or sixteen feet long. You know, you mm-hmm. slide it. Sure. And that way, you never have to retie it. You know, you just slide it up and down, and it seems to grab. Um, put a new line on every year just to play it safe. Um, if a fish grabs it and it's frayed out, you're losing your daredevil. You're not going to lose your teaser, so it's not the end of the world. But nobody likes to have their favorite daredevil disappear on their spear trip. So I just swap it out every year just to play it safe. Yeah, yeah I just had a swivel break on me. Um, not in the spear house. It was actually the decoy show, which I, I was going <laughs> to talk about. Um but yeah, I was at the decoy show. Some guy tried out my decoy and it broke. Um, so I'm always happy when they don't break in the in the spear house. So I got another question here. Um, if I was to get into spearing, who between the three of you would be the best guide? Ooh, Trent's <laughs> out of it. <laughs> um. I think we all think we'd all, all be the best guide, mm-hmm. so. No, if I had to choose, I'd fish for Ryan. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've coyote hunted with you, and if you're any good at spearing like that, I'm, I'm going Let Ryan. me tell you this, though. <laughs> so Trent and I were spearing out of Devil's <laughs> Way, and uh, I was just there to to record. I had the camera, and I sat with his uh, Jared, Jordan's brother, Gunnison. <laughs> He speared a nice big pike, and then he decided he was going to go sit in Trent's house. So Trent came and sat in Jared's house, and I was sitting there recording, and this this big pike came in. And I don't remember the circumstance, but I grabbed the spear, and I speared it, and I brought it up. And I didn't think it was that big, but it was like 39 inches. And I felt so bad afterwards. I'm like, Trent, I'm sorry. I, did, I was here to record, and I don't even know why I... I think Jared went to my house <laughs> mm-hmm. with my brand new spear yeah. and got a fish too. And that yeah. was, I think, it for the day, wasn't it? Yeah. That was yeah. fun, though. That was a yeah. good trip. Well, we can agree that any one of us you sit with will try to put you on fish. Yeah. That's the main thing. Yeah. Type of battery, it's a 6-volt. Uh, we talked about that a little bit earlier. But, yep, it's those square lantern batteries. And you prefer the dog oh, oh that's one thing i should talk about too um don't hook them up backwards no you can it's reversible they'll just reverse, they'll just reverse the polarity yeah. but if you buy one of these i do offer 18 months of warranty so it should get you two spearing seasons you know you pick one up 
something happens to it, get it back to me. If the motor's bad or something, I'll put it in. Well, my good buddy Trent, he bought one of my spinners, and I get a call from him right away and says my spinner doesn't work. And I'm tense because I'm like, this isn't good. Just getting into this, I already got one coming back. So he brings, he goes, doesn't spin. I didn't think nothing of it. So I pull the motor out of it, put a new motor in it, hook it back up to Trent's battery. Doesn't spin. <laughs> this is the fresh fresh batch of the hey, different motors. Too yeah, or I just started with a new batch of motors, so I'm nervous. I'm like, what the heck? So then I pull it. I pull the cords back out, and I'm like, I wonder if another battery maybe helped. Hooked it up, fired right up. Hooked up Trent's old motor, fired right up. <laughs> So it's so a battery. If you are going to buy one and you don't have and you have problems with it, please don't send it back to me until you try another battery. That's all I ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to fix anything, but I'm going to charge you if it's a battery. <laughs> <laughs> it was a brand new battery too, but I've had that happen where I bought a battery yeah. and then they didn't work. See, it's just not it's no, not just me. Just try another one okay. next time, okay? All right. And then I'll fix it if it's bad. Okay. okay. All right. I got it fixed anyway. It wasn't bad. No, I know you got it. Now you're on your second motor. <laughs> but I used your. Uh, That's a good warranty. Off. That's real good. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not gonna make any money putting new motors in with bad batteries. Uh-huh. It's kind of rough. Not that I'm looking to get rich off this. It's more of a hobby that pays for itself. But. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I was just gonna talk a little bit about the decoy show that happened here a couple weeks ago because it's been a while since we've been on, but. Um, Really good turnout again. Bajou, uh, Northern Spike put it on. Um, Jordan Gunnison and Trent and Jared. And uh, I don't know how many people he had walked through the door. We were on 450 now. 450, this year. yeah. We're up a little bit. Yeah. So. I think I was almost sold out by noon for sure and had a couple left. Got rid of them in the afternoon. But yeah, it was a great show. Everyone there I talked to that was a vendor said it was just awesome. And you know, people were there to buy. I think people were sick of being indoors and right. wanted to get out. So just thank Jordan and everyone there with Northern Spike for putting that on again. Um, if you get a chance next year, stop by. They raffled off a fish house, and I don't know how many tickets the guy that won bought uh, bought that won. But, um, um, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of benefits are coming. Just for walking in the door, yeah, we get, gave away – a couple buddy heaters mm-hmm. uh i think uh long necker's trip that was on just the entry yeah he we get uh cory long necker donated a two-person guided spearing trip um to devil's lake um so just by showing up yeah uh, you're getting something anyway a lot of mm-hmm. so um so no right guesses yet for the hat, but we'll, if nobody guesses right answer, we'll go with the closest answer. So, um, so I was just <laughs> before we go here, <laughs> Wayne Bembo's piping in again. I I tried on at that uh, decoy show. I tried on like a four or five hundred dollar cowboy hat because I had a, the big Doc <laughs> Holiday mustache, and I thought, well, I want to get a picture with a cowboy hat. Well, then they told me the price of it, and I was like, whoo. <laughs> That's a that's a real cowboy there, but so in the next coming weeks, um, we're trying to get some people scheduled for Friday night pikes. Uh, next weekend, we're going to be down in Clearwater with uh, Thin Ice Spearing Decoys, uh, Jared Sapinski, and uh, while we're down there, we're going to be interviewing uh, uh, Lauren and Scott Jelly uh, with Jelly Spears, which I'm really excited to to get them on the show. Um, that one may be taped, so it might not be live, but, um, that'll be on one of the next coming weeks. We also, um, have reached out to Melissa Shockman. She's a kind of a newer decoy carver from North Dakota. I've seen some of her work. It's really, really good. I think she'd learned from Whittier's at one point. Um, but her, the name of her decoys is Great Day Decoys. Um, so we're going to be tentatively having her come out on uh, February 4th. And then Corey Longnecker, um, talked with him at the decoy show. He would like to get us down there um, to interview him. So we're going to try to maybe get him on uh, schedule. Um, I know 
think it's December 12th or that weekend. Uh, you guys will be up at Cabotogama. Um, so maybe we can get Jordan to do a quick little interview with Judd up there at Ash Canam. Um, we were up there last year, but uh, um, it'd be fun to to have a, a little conversation with him again. He's got a great resort up there, great um, establishment. Uh, I remember walking in the door in there, and there's a big, huge wood stove. As soon as you walk in, and you come in off the cold lake, and it just warms you right up as soon as you walk in there. So, so yeah, if there's uh, no other things you guys want to talk about, we'll maybe wrap her up. And Just so want to thank good. Kyle for coming for out. Me. Been glad to have you here, and Trent Appreciate for filling guys. in. I think Trent might fill in a couple times here and there. So <laughs> Jordan's busy. He's busy. It's working hard now. Yep. <clears throat> Painting saws and cutting handles and all that kind of fun stuff. So good for him. Glad he's doing something he loves now. Is Wayne still on there? You should ask him how he's enjoying his retirement. Yeah, Wayne, how's your retirement? <laughs> Are you having fun with your young youngster there? <laughs> <laughs> running an adult daycare now. <laughs> <laughs> all right well you guys uh get out on the ice and uh um good luck try to get that uh wall mounter if you can and pass a few if you can too and uh, we'll see you next time that's your party you guys are throwing that that's yeah i'm going i'm just too crazy cool see you guys tonight then